Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll continue to learn about pre processing in scikit-learn. We'll look at another nonlinear transformation, PAR transform. In previous video, we looked at part, uh, quantile transform, and this is another uh, way we can do a nonlinear transform. So we'll look at what a power transform is and look at a couple of examples and in next video we'll do the actual implementation in python so a power transform is basically transformation of data using power functions and the power functions could be more complex or they could be as simple as just x x squared or uh, x to the power of 0.1 now in this particular slide, there are uh, five numbers listed. And uh, I just want to show you the notation that we'll be using is xi means uh, a number at specific position in that particular list here. So x1 means the first number, x2. So the i stands for one, two, three, four, five, etc. And when we look at the formulas that are in sklearn, when it says xi, it actually means a, a specific number in that particular data set. Now, if we were to do a simple power transform of these numbers and we were to uh, raise this to power of 0.1, then this is the transformed data set. And here we have 195.19 is now changed to 1.57. So that's a power transformed data. And if we I have a lot more data points such as thousand data points as shown here in the leftmost plot which is a uh, uh, right tail as in there is a tail on the right hand side and most of the data is on the left hand side now if we want to bring this data set close to a normal distribution we can use power transform and for uh, to do that we can uh, raise the each particular data point to a particular power that is shown uh, as a title of each of those subplots. So when we raise the power to point it, this is the uh, distribution we transform into. When we raise the power to point one, we get pretty close to a normal distribution as shown in this plot. And similar to this, we can raise it to a negative power as shown here. And for negative point one, again, we still are close to a uh, normal distribution. Uh, however, as we go further away, then we are going back to that right tail distribution that we started with. So that's essentially a way to uh, visualize what the power transform, uh, how it works in the background. Now, uh, sklearn library has two main types of power transform. One is this Yo Johnson and the other one is Bock Cox power uh, transformation. And in this transformation, there are four different functions that are provided. If the numbers are all positive and are equal to zero or greater than zero, and if the lambda value that is used uh, for as a power, if it's not equal to zero, it can be negative or positive, but not equal to zero, then we can use this particular function to get the transformed data set. Now, in the Python implementation, we'll continue to use this very first function uh, to transform the data. Now, for box Cox trans uh, transform, uh, it can be applied only to positive data. So the lambda value can be either positive or negative, but the x values that are in the data uh, set, uh, they can be only positive values. So uh, in that case, uh, we can use either of these two um, uh, functions to transform the data. And in the Python implementation, we'll use the very first function to uh, perform the power transform on our data set. So the final takeaway points from this uh, these slides is that uh, as uh, we looked at in the quantile transform, again here, power transform, uh, if, uh, you, if it's needed, it uh, bringing the data close to a normal distribution could improve the accuracy of the machine learning model. Again, this is also a monotonic transformation. Uh, it means that the values are either uh, are either continuously increasing 
or they are continuously decreasing and this power transform can also uh, can minimize skewness what i mean by that is uh, we started with the right tail data set but then we minimized the skewness and got it uh, closer to the normal distribution so we reduce the tail part of that particular distribution and it can help stabilize the variance therefore so i hope in this video you got an intuition about what is power transform and uh, kind of understand what goes on in the background in the next video we we'll look at the implementation of power transform please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you